Good day, friends. I'm Kerry Dillinger, and this is Bible Class Topics. You might remember a couple of years ago here on the channel, we presented a lesson on the Judgment Day. Well, I think it's time for us to have another lesson. I'll put a link to that first lesson in the description below if you want to go back and review that video. There will, of course, be some overlap between the two lessons. We're going to talk about the Day of Judgment, and we're going to start by reading Acts 17, verses 29 through 31. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art or the imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world. He has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. All of us regular viewers of the channel know exactly who the Apostle is talking about here in Acts 17, he is talking about Jesus Christ, the man who was appointed by God, and the man who was given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Well, how do we perceive the Judgment Day? Do we perceive it as something we all dread? Well, I'm sure most of us do dread the Judgment Day. And we hope that it will occur in the future, maybe in the distant future. But the Judgment Day is coming, whether we dread it or not, and we need to be prepared. Let's talk a minute about three courts in which all of us have to appear. We have to face the court of public opinion. We have to face the court of our own conscience, and we have to face the court of final judgment. As practicing Christians, we must consider what others think about our lives. We are the world's Bible. We must be an example of good and right. Day by day, we face the court of public opinion. And... Day by day, we live with our own selves, and our conscience is constantly judging us. That's the court of our conscience. All of us will face the court of the final judgment. Let's talk about Felix. Felix was in charge of the jail where Paul had been sent. And Paul had time to speak with Felix on a number of occasions. Felix was married to Drusilla, a Jewess, and he did know some things about Judaism and about this new religion called Christianity. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned, that is, Paul, reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. I'm reading from the New King James Version. If you have the American Standard Version, you'll see that where the New King James Version said Felix was afraid, the American Standard Version says Felix was terrified. Paul had convinced Felix that there was something terrible about that judgment to come. And that's when Felix would stand before God and give an account for the deeds he had done here on this earth. We are all like Felix. We all will have to stand before God the court of the final judgment. The fact that there will be a judgment day is 
a day of absolute certainty. Let's read Acts 17, 30 and 31 again. The times of ignorance got overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. In Hebrews 9 verse 27 we read, As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. After death comes, we'll be called up from the grave to give an account to God in judgment. And we do not know when Judgment Day is coming. We do know that Judgment Day is tied in with the second coming of Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself said he did not know when he was coming back. Jesus said the angels in heaven did not know. Only the Father knows. But the certainty of the Judgment Day is predicated upon the fact that that is a day appointed by God. What if we're alive when Christ returns? Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. Well, are we ready for the judgment day? If we're dead, everyone will be raised. If we're alive, we'll see Christ return. After we die, however, we cannot prepare for the judgment day. Our preparation is over. That means it's up to us to live every day in preparation. And if we do that, then it will not matter when the Judgment Day actually comes. The Judgment Day is a day of absolute certainty. And guess what? Everyone will be there. Everyone will attend Judgment Day. It won't be our decision. We will decide whether to hear God's word and obey his gospel. We will determine whether to follow in Jesus' footsteps after we obey the gospel. However, we do not have a decision regarding death, and we do not have a decision regarding judgment. We can ignore God in this life if we choose to, but we cannot ignore him when he calls us up from the grave. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or, or bad. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. Regardless of whether we have lived a righteous life or an evil life, we will all come to the judgment of the Lord. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another as a sheep divides, or I should say, as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Matthew 25, 31 through 33, then verse 41, then verse 46. Everyone will be present at the judgment day. The Judgment Day will be a day of revelation. It will be a day of revealing. Speaking of revelation, let's turn there to chapter 1, the second part of verse 4 and 5, and then we'll skip to verse 7. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, 
to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Everything will be revealed on the day of judgment. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. We're bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that ourselves, that is, we ourselves, boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. All will be revealed. Everything. All our secrets will be revealed on the day of judgment. Solomon said this as he was bringing his Ecclesiastes writings to a close. The preacher, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment including every secret thing, whether good or whether evil. God knows everyone's secrets. You know, we don't know many things about each other. We don't even know many things about our spouses or our brothers and sisters by blood, our cousins. We don't know that much about them. We think we might. But you know what? God knows everything. He knows everything about everybody. Those things that we've not repented of, God knows. Those acts that are still against us will be brought into judgment because the Bible says they will all be revealed, whether good or bad. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 2, 12 and verse 16. On judgment day, everyone will be judged based on the gospel of Christ. Back to the revelation of Jesus Christ, as recorded by the Apostle John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them, and I saw the dead, and small and great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. God's law, the law of Jesus Christ, will judge us. Well, what about those that came before? What about those that even came before the law of Moses? Well, the law will judge those that lived and died under the law of the patriarchs. Then, the law of Moses will judge those who lived under that law. However, 
Those two laws are a moot point to us today because everyone alive today is living under the Christian dispensation. Therefore, the law of Christ will judge us. Judgment Day will be a day of revelation. We will be revealed. Our secrets will be displayed. And the will of God will judge them. And we will be judged by the will of God. And we will be judged by the things that are written. In John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, John, as he's beginning to bring his gospel to a close, says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. To remain in a right relationship with Jesus Christ, we must refer to the things written down. These things are the things we must believe about the Lord and the teachings of the Lord that we are obligated to follow. These are also the things which we are going to be judged by. We can think <coughs> I beg your pardon. We can think of the Judgment Day as our Examination Day. The Day of Judgment will be Examination Day. The examination questions that God will give us are all in the Bible. These examination questions will judge our deeds. It's what we learn in the Gospels, in the New Testament, is what will judge our deeds. That's where the answers to the examination day questions will be found. Well, what about a creed book? No. What about a prayer book? No. What about some church manual? No. We will not be judged by any of those. We will not be judged by the word of man. The words of the New Testament will judge us. It's up to us to read God's word and to find out what he wants us to do because we will be lost if we follow what man has said. As Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, it's up to us to be diligent to show ourselves approved. The old King James says we need to study to show ourselves approved. It takes work. Remember, the day of judgment will be examination day. The day of judgment will be a day of many bitter regrets. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, Jesus said, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we... Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It'll be bitter regrets because it'll be impossible for us to ride into heaven on anyone else's coattails. And it won't matter if we go to the biggest church in town or a little gathering of a few people in a house. The Judgment Day is not for churches. It's for individuals. There is a story of a man that worried that a particular church in his town would not allow him to be a member. He had a dream one night, and he dreamed he was talking to the Lord. He told the Lord... Lord, they won't let me into their church. And the Lord said to him, My son, do not worry a thing about it. I've not been able to get into that church either. Nope, it does not matter whether we're members of the largest church in town, the wealthiest church in the city, or any other church in town that is not the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For us to have no regrets on the day of judgment, we must individually do the will of the Father. 
Would you not hate to live out your life zealous and active in something you thought was right and turn out to be one of the ones mentioned by Paul in Romans 10 verses 1 and 2? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. In Acts 4, starting in verse 8, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, and he says to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if this day... We are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man by what means he has been made well. Let it be known to all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. God is no respecter of persons. My salvation will be based on whether I have done the will of God. Judgment Day is going to be a day of deep regrets. It will be a day when families of the earth will be severed from the family of the Lord. Judgment Day will be a day of bitter regrets, but it will be a day of great rejoicing. Peter wrote this in 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. In Matthew 25, verse 34, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. There's a great day coming. There's a great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by when the saints and the sinners will be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? There's a bright day coming. A bright day coming. There's a bright day coming by and by. But its brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready for that day to come? Oh, there's a sad day coming. A sad day coming, there's a sad day coming by and by, when the sinner shall hear his doom. Depart, I know ye not. Are you ready for that day to come? The old hymn, There's a Great Day Coming, written by Will L. Thompson. Are you ready for that day to come? Let's hope and pray that we all are preparing every day. Our outline was taken from Sermons by Pickup, a collection of sermons by Harry Pickup Sr. It was collected by Brother H.E. Phillips, and I found this outline on pages 97 to 115 of that book. Thank you for watching. Thank you for studying with us. Our PowerPoint template is provided by the folks over at Slides Go. And we appreciate them allowing us to use their work. Please be back with us again, hopefully in the next few days. And until then, may God bless.